This is part 48 of Angular Craft tutorial. In this video, we will discuss what's a pure pipe and why is it not recommended to use pipes to filter and sort data in Angular. This is continuation to our previous video, part 47. So please watch part 47 before proceeding. In Angular, there are two types of pipes, pure and impure. In this video, we'll discuss pure pipes and in our next video, we'll discuss impure pipes. If you recollect, in our previous video, we implemented this employee filter pipe. By default, when we create a new pipe, it is pure. That's because if you look at this add pipe decorator, along with the name property, it has got another property called pure. And look at this property name at the end, it has got a question mark, meaning this property is optional and its default value is true. So whenever we create a new pipe, it's pure by default. Now, if you want to make this pipe impure, all you have to do is change the value of this property to false. You have to think very carefully before making a pipe impure and using it in your Angular application. In our next video, we'll discuss what impure pipes are and why they are bad from performance perspective. For now, let's keep this pipe pure. So, to make a pipe impure, all we have to do is set this pure flag to false. Now let's understand what's a pure pipe. A pure pipe is a pipe that is executed only when a pure change to the input value is detected. So the obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is what's a pure change? Well, a pure change is either a change to a primitive input value or a changed object reference. This is a very important statement. So let's break it down and understand it with an example. Now, if you take any pipe in Angular, the input for the pipe can either be a value type like strings, numbers, booleans, etc. or a reference type like arrays, functions, dates, objects, etc. If the input to the pipe is a value type and if that value changes, it's considered a pure change and the pure pipe is executed. Let's understand this with an example. Notice on this list page, Within each bootstrap employee panel, we have the name display right here. Now what we want to do is convert these names to uppercase. This is easy to achieve. We can make use of the Angular's built-in uppercase pipe. The HTML that displays these employee panels is in our display employee component view template. This is the expression that displays the employee name. So let's pass this through the Angular's uppercase pipe. Notice the employee names in the panel headers are converted to uppercase as expected. Now let's include a button just below the search by name text box and when we click that button, we want to change the employee name. Let's go to the view template of our list employees component, make a copy of this development and then we'll change the bits that are required. Instead of a text box, we want a button and when we click this button, we want to call a method. Let's name it change employee name. We don't have this method yet. We'll create it in just a bit. The text on the button is change employee name. Let's style this button using the bootstrap button classes, btn and btn primary. Finally, let's create this change employee name method in the component class. Now this property right here, employees, is an employees array and contains our list of employees. So what we want to do is change one of the employee names. Let's go ahead and change the first employee name. So we want to change the first employee name to something else. Let's actually set this to Jordan. Notice when this list page first loads, the name of this employee object is Mark. Now when we click this change employee name button, it's going to change the name of this employee to Jordan. But before we do that, let's take a look at display employee component. Notice here, we are passing the employee name through the Angular's uppercase pipe. Employee name here is a string and that is a value type. So this means if the input to a pipe is a primitive type, that is a value type like string, number, boolean, etc., and if that input value changes, that's considered a pure change and the pipe is executed. 
Notice now when we click this button, the name changes, which is a pure change, the pipe executes and the view is updated. Now let's consider the second case. An input value to a pipe can also be a reference type like array, date, object, function, etc. So if the input to a pipe is a reference type and if that object reference changes, then that change is considered a pure change and the pipe is executed. Let's understand this with an example. Now, if you look at our employee filter pipe, which we implemented in our previous video, the input value for this pipe is an array. An array is a reference type. We are using this pipe in list employees component right here. And the input for this pipe is this property employees, which contains an array of employees. Now, let me change the code that we have in this button click event. So in our list employees component class, Let's comment this line and I'm going to create a constant here. Let me name it new employee array. Let's also give this constant a type. It's going to be employees array. And I'm going to use object assign method to create a new employee array. Now I'm going to change the name of the first employee in this array to Jordan. And finally, let's set this array as the source of our data. So this dot employees equals our new employee array. Now let's understand what's going on here because this is important. If we look at our employee filter pipe, the input for the pipe is an array, which is a reference type. And if we look at what we are doing in this event handler method, so this method is called when we click this button. So what we are doing here within the event handler, we have the original array of employees in this property, right? And then when we click the button, we're using the object assign method to make a copy of this array. So we are creating a brand new employee array here and then copying all the objects of this array into this array. So we have two arrays of employees, which has got two different object references. And then in this new array that we have created, we are changing the name of the first employee to Jordan. And finally, we are setting that array as the source of our data. So when we click the button, what's happening here is the input value for our employee filter pipe is a reference type and we are changing the object reference. And when the object reference changes, that's considered a pure change, meaning the pipe will be executed. At the moment, on our list page, we see all the three original employees, Mark, Mary, and John. Now, when I type letter J in this text box, we see only that employee who has letter J in his name. Now, when we click this button, we are executing this code, and this code is changing the reference of the array. And when the reference changes, that's considered a pure change and a pure pipe is automatically executed when it detects a pure change. So when I click this button, notice now we see two employees who has letter J in their name. So the important point to keep in mind is pure pipes are very fast because JavaScript is very quick at checking if there is a pure change. And we know what a pure change is. Pure change is one of these two things. If the input value for a pipe is a value type and if that value changes that's a pure change or if the input is a reference type like an array date object and if the underlying reference changes that's also considered a pure change. Now this is where it gets slightly complicated. A pure pipe is not executed if the input to the pipe is a reference type like an object and only the property values of that object changes but not the reference. Let me explain what I mean with an example. Now let's comment these three lines of code and uncomment this line. Notice here we are not changing the underlying array reference. We are only changing one of the object property values. Now do you think our employee filter pipe will be executed when this change is detected? Let's look at that in action. Notice now we see again our original list of employees, Mark, Mary, and John. Now when I type letter J within our search by name text box, 
we only see that one employee who has letter J in his name. Now when I click this button, remember we are changing the name of our first employee Mark to Jordan and look at that. Our filter pipe is not executed and we don't see that employee. Now when I remove this letter J, that's when I see Jordan. So the important question to answer is why didn't we see Jordan? Well, that's because the change that happened when we clicked this button change employee name is not a pure change. So our pure pipe is not executed. So the obvious question that comes to our mind is how to make this work? Well, one way is to make our pipe impure. But there are performance implications of using impure pipes. So in our next video, we'll discuss what are impure pipes, their performance implications and the recommended approach to filtering data. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.